Welcome to another video in the SOLIDWORKS Formula SAE tutorial series. In today's video, we'll be talking about how to use surface modeling to create bodywork. The example part we'll be using is a Formula SAE nose cone. To begin, I'll be talking about how we're going to prepare to model the bodywork. I've opened up a copy of the full car model. We're going to try to make the bodywork in context, as this will allow us to use all the existing models and assemblies to create the bodywork model. It is possible to create the bodywork on its own, but we'd have to export some of these things and make dummy models, and if possible, and you have a computer that's capable, I highly recommend trying to do this modeling in context. I've gone ahead and hidden most of the things that aren't important, such as the engine and powertrain system, the rear suspension, the seat, and I've just left the things that are actually going to affect the bodywork, the front suspension, the crush zone, the cooling system, the exhaust. Again, a lot of this is going to depend on your models and how you're designing your car and your bodywork, but in this case, these are the things that affect the major components of the bodywork. I'm going to get even a little more specific, and we're going to hide most of the rear part of the car in order to just focus on the front and the nose cone, which is the part we'll be modeling today. To focus on the nose cone, I'm going to use the section view in order to remove everything in the rear part of the car from my view. Using the section view, I can hide the entire rear portion of the car and basically focus on everything forward of the front roll hoop, which is going to comprise the parts that affect the modeling of the nose cone. I'm also going to hide the front suspension system. We can come back and make adjustments for this later and make some changes to the nose cone after we've already formed it to the shape of the frame in the car. Now that I have just the bare minimum of parts, we're ready to start modeling. To open up a new in-context part, go up into the toolbar and select Insert Components, and from the drop-down, select New Part. The first thing is to create a new plane that is going to represent the front of the nose cone. Later on, we'll probably adjust this distance in order to change the shape and size of the nose cone, but here I've got it set something roughly 10 inches from the front of the crush zone. This is going to be the very point of the nose cone after we've got it finished. The plane I've created is parallel to the front roll hoop. We'll be using the roll hoop sketches a lot in the modeling process and for reference points, so you should go ahead and turn them on if you haven't already. We'll be using a lofted surface to model the nose cone, and for this specific example, we're going to need a minimum of four sketches. We'll need to model the outline of the top of the nose cone, the outline of the bottom of the nose cone, an outline of the rear of the nose cone, and finally a point sketch that is going to represent the tip of the nose cone. Here is the first sketch I've created that will define the outline for the top of the nose cone. There are a couple of key anchor points. First, the front of the nose cone. This point is in the plane that I created previously and also has an attached circle. The circle has a radius of 2 inches and that just makes sure that I don't go under the 2 inch radius of curvature that is specified in the SAE rules. In the back I have another anchor point that is above the rear roll hoop and in the same plane as the front roll hoop. This is also the plane that I'll be using for the back of the nose cone. If your nose cone extends past the roll hoop for any reason, you're going to need to make this anchor point in that same plane as the back plane of the nose cone. To create the outline, I'm just using a simple spline which can be found in the sketch toolbar. Using splines will allow us to give the nose cone a very organic shape. Using the control points, I can drag and the spline will follow and follow all the curvature commands that I've set for it already. In addition, I can change the angle of some of the spline and I can also add control points. For example, if I right click here and insert a spline point, I then have a new way of dragging the spline down and I could create a different shape entirely for my nose cone. Once you've created a good starting point, you can go ahead and exit the sketch. Remember there are several more sketches we have to make before we can create the full surface, and once the surface is actually lofted, we may find we have to go back and alter this sketch a little bit to fine tune it. This is why I haven't defined anything fully yet, and I still have a blue sketch. Using similar techniques and splines, I've created another sketch that outlines the bottom of the nose cone. I've used the same anchor point in front, and I've also used a new anchor point in rear that is in the front roll hoop plane, just as the above anchor point. 
some of you may be wondering why we didn't just create this whole sketch all at once. But unfortunately, if we do it this way, SolidWorks will run into trouble when trying to create the loft. We need to have the top and the bottom outlined separately and one point defined as the final point of our loft in order to make everything work right. The next sketch I'm going to create is the outline of the rear of the nose cone. The important things to remember are to use the same anchor points that you used on the top and the bottom sketch. These will be critical to ensure the surface lofts correctly. Again, I've used tangency and splines in order to create this line and I've also left it undefined because I may need to go back and make some small adjustments. The last sketch I've created is just a simple point sketch that exists in the plane at the front of the nose cone. Nothing complicated here, but it's necessary in order to make the surface loft correctly. Using these four sketches, I now have the minimum number required in order to create a lofted surface. To create the surface, click on the Surfaces tab in the Command Manager and select Lofted Surface. Under Profiles, first select the rear sketch that defines the rear of the nose cone, and then you're going to select the point sketch that defines the front of the nose cone. SolidWorks is very good about previewing the final result, so as we can see it's already tried to create a solution, but we haven't given it the guide curves yet, so this is obviously something that would not work. The next step is to select the guide curves. First, select the top guide curve, and then select the bottom guide curve. When you're done, select the green check mark, and it will create the surface for you. When working in context, you may have to rebuild the document by pressing Control B in order to get the surface to show up correctly. Like I said before, we've now done the minimum, but obviously there's a problem. This would not work as a nose cone. We'd be going through all kinds of tubes and running into all kinds of issues. In order to solve these problems, we're going to need to add some intermediate contours that define the nose cone along a cross section on the side. I'm going to go ahead and delete my surface. and This will return me to all the original sketches and I'm going to need to create one more that's going to be right here along the front bulkhead that will define the curve around the front bulkhead. Again, using splines, I've drawn up a curve that will follow around the front bulkhead. When we incorporate this into the loft, it will allow SolidWorks to create a lofted surface that goes around the front bulkhead and still comes back to the front point. Some important things that I've done here are create some parallel lines for construction that I'm going to make the surface tangent to. At the end of this, as you may have noticed, I'm only making half of the nose cone. I'm going to then mirror this to create the other half, so I want the two halves, obviously at the top, to be smooth and be tangent to each other, so I've created this imaginary line to simulate that tangency. I've also used the Pierce relation so I can create anchor points that lie along the sketches for the top and the bottom of the nose cone that I've already created. It's really important that the endpoints of these contours lie along the sketches you've already created in order to create a proper loft for the nose cone. Now that I've created a contour around the front bulkhead, let's go ahead and create a loft again and see what it looks like this time. This time when I create the loft, instead of just selecting the front and back sketches, I'm also going to select this intermediate sketch in between as another profile to use. As long as I've set the anchor points correctly on the top and bottom sketch, I can still use the same guide curves. And now the lofted surface looks much better. We can see that from this side it doesn't appear anything is sticking through besides the suspension points obviously, but it's not hitting the front bulkhead or the crush zone. Depending on the geometry of your frame or your nose cone, you might need to add a couple more profiles and intermediate sketches in in order to get the nose cone to flow properly around all of your components. As I mentioned previously, I've actually only modeled half of the nose cone. In this case, the nose cone is symmetric, so I did this on purpose because it makes the modeling process easier. I can come back and look at it from one side, and then in order to create the final nose cone, I just need to mirror this over. To mirror the other half of the nose cone, go to Features in your Command Manager and select the mirror option. Use the center line of your part 
as the mirror face and select the surface to mirror. This will create the final surface for the nose cone. That concludes the surfacing tutorial part one. In part two, we'll go over how to finish up the nose cone and also talk about some more advanced surface modeling techniques. We'll also look at how to model the side pod and how it's different from modeling the nose cone. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, send them to sfalkner at solidworks.com, and I'll see you next time for surfacing part two.